Greetings and happy Christmas. I see Richard's already in the Christmas spirit. He's got his Santa hat on. Ho, 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 Ian. How are you? I'm good. How's the weather? It's absolutely raining heavily. <laughs> so it is. Here. is it? A lot of wind because of storm pie or whatever they want to call it. Yeah. I know it was very windy over here as well. Yeah. Uh, it was on Wednesday night. But that's because I had a curry. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, as you see, we're all very Christmassy on the Saturday show. <laughs> Ball balls <laughs> and all. And is it just a bit of plug? If you want to have a laugh, Richard and James and who else? Uh, John, Six Inch Pianist, James Griffiths Channel. Yeah, they're, we're, they're we're going to appreciate the... my worst Queen album, but it's going to be worth watching. All I'll say. Love it, love it. Yeah, yeah. watch so, that. So watch on Richard's channel. That's my guys. Go to Richard's channel. Or James Griffiths' channel, and you'll see a video that's going up today. Anyway, that's enough of the plug-in, because Richard's going to be on three times today. Yeah, my own as well. So I'd today's to... topic is, is Christmas number ones, but don't mention the word Christmas, Santa Claus, Jesus. It's just ordinary songs that happen to be number one on Christmas Day. Well, Ian, it's coming Christmas. That's a disgrace. This hat has to go off, and this one has to go on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, there we go. Yes. So this is the Black Christmas. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so the usual thing, Richard goes first, I go second. I've got five bubbling unders. I have three. Well, I've got four, and um, I'll call it four and a half. Right, okay. Well, I'll, I'll I'll tell you whether I think you're cheating or not. All right. Yeah. Okay, my number 10, and um, I have to admit, half of these I think are really good, and half are not so good, but they're not bad. But my number 10 is from 1981, That's the Human League, Don't You Want Me, which I think is a very good song. I don't think it's the best thing off that album, that being The Sound of the Crowd, or even um, well, Open Your Heart, and even Love Action, but still is a really good track uh, iconic video as well it was number one for five weeks over the christmas period and it gets my number 10. i'm not going to say too much about that i think we're going to match on a lot okay well my number 10 comes from christmas 1987 and over that period it was at number one for five weeks and it's the pet shop boys always on my mind shock horror ian likes a pet shop boys <laughs> Yeah, well, it's Jimmy Barnes. Song, but it's a very good cover. Yeah, it is, and I'm not going to say too much about that either. <laughs> We're oh, so you I, I, this is going to be good. <laughs> this is going to be the quickest video out. No, it is a very good cover. I like it. Um, I also love the Elvis Presley version of it, and I'm not too keen on the Willie Nelson one because I'm just not a Willie Nelson fan. No, nor am I. Well, my number nine is a very controversial one because I don't think it is the Christmas number one, although it is down as the Christmas number one because it didn't get to number one until the 27th of December. Now, I think it's to do with the sales up to the 27th of December what made it the Christmas number one. But on the 25th, it wasn't number one, and that is... Um, Jackie Wilson and Rick Petit from 1986, which I think is a great wee song. Okay, it was ancient even then. I think it was an early 60s song. But to me, the Christmas number one was always the House Martins' Caravan of Love, but it doesn't get the credit of being that number one. So, Rick Petit, really good song, fantastic video uh, with all the plaster scene and all the rest of it, which was a big thing around that time. And um, was the House Martins did it themselves for Happy Hour. And um, it gets my number nine, four weeks at number one. Okay, well, my number nine was your number ten. Ah, don't you want me? Yeah, uh, I, I agree with you. It's not probably the best track off there, but it's a really good video, very iconic video. And um, people sometimes forget that it's actually the girl that doesn't want the boy. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think it's the other way around. It's not. It's the girl going, on your bike, matey. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, it's a great song. I mean, it's great. It's it's just a really good song, you know, and worthy of a number one at Christmas. Yeah. My number eight, you definitely will not have, but I do like it. It is a big soppy ballad. It's from 1992 at 10 weeks at number one. And that's Whitney Houston's I Will Always Love You. Now, everyone says the Dolly Parton version is better. No, it's not. It's different. This one, I think her voice is absolutely brilliant in it. And she just, she lets it rip. She really does. And I've always loved it. I always thought it was really good. Deserved to be number one. And that's my number eight. Whitney Houston, I Will Always Love You. It's all right. I, I had a friend that was a singing coach, and she said she puts too, she puts too many, um, too much into it. She's using yeah. tw instead of using twenty notes, she's using sixty. Yeah, well, maybe so, but I yeah, still. She, and she says she warbles in it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think it's an okay song. Okay, my number eight is the Christmas number one of nineteen eighty three. It's five okay. weeks. <laughs> It's the flying pickets with the Yazoo cover of Only You. People say no. it's Christmassy. It's not. It's not a Christmas song. It's just a great no. pop song. I, I I prefer the Yazoo's version, but there was no way I was including that song because that kept Slade off number one. I kept my oh my off the top, and that would have been their seventh number one hit single. So it gets nowhere near my list. But I have to admit, it's not bad. But still, I prefer my oh my. But uh, yeah, still prefer Yazoo's version. Okay, my number seven is going way back to 1961. It's a song I do really like. And uh, this is not the version from Breakfast and Tiffany's, I don't think. But it's the big hit, and it's uh, Danny Williams and Moon River. It's an absolutely beautiful track. And even Morrissey had a go at that in 1994 as the B-side to, I'm not too sure, I think it might have been, it wasn't Boxers. I think it might have been the one he did with Susie, out of Susie and the Banshees. But, yeah, beautiful, beautiful song, and, um, yeah, always liked it. And it was only number one for two weeks in 61, but, yeah, it was a Christian number one. Yeah, good choice. Nice song. I do like that song. It's and I love that. I love it when it's in the film as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. Okay, my number seven. You've already mentioned it. It's that one, that controversial one that kept the House Martins and all that business. It's Jackie Wilson's mm -hmm. re Petit, and it's there for the same reasons. I love the video. It is very, very clever. It actually was number four in 1957. Oh, was it 57? All right, okay. 57, yeah, when it first came out. So mm -hmm. it took a, a, took a little while to get the number one, but uh, and a well-deserved number one. It's a great 60s song. I liked it long before it came out because it was in, like, Mum and Dad's singles mm -hmm. collection. So, um, yeah, great choice, and um, it's, I'm glad it got in twice. Yeah, so am I. It's, it's one of those sort of standards that I really do like. Well, my number uh, six, and we come into the 21st century, and this actually featured in my number ones of the 2000s. And it's an old song again. It's from the 60s, but it's a remaking with somebody I can't stand, Robbie Williams, and somebody I absolutely adore, Nicole Kidman. And it's something stupid, which I think is a really good song. And I think both of them do really well. And again, I like the video of it. And um, I do like, is it Nancy and Frank Sinatra that sang that as well? But um, yeah, number one for three weeks in 2001. It's from Robbie Williams' Swing When You're Winning album. And that's the only track I actually like. But uh, something stupid, my number six. Yeah, that might get a mention later. Mm -hmm. I'll be bubbling under, I think. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you a little story about why, why I actually prefer this version. To, although I like Nancy and Frank's, I prefer this version. There is a reason for that. Okay, my number six, 1968. This was number one for four weeks. 
אני שששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששש
on a, ra a record. Mm -hmm. Great song. Love it. Yeah, I love it. Okay, my number three has actually got it was number one twice at Christmas. Mm -hmm. One being in 1975 and the other being 1991. Now, I know Bohemian Rhapsody is not one of my, you know, I always say, oh, I've had enough of it. But when it comes to no, Chris, in this list, it had to be in there because it was such an iconic number one mm -hmm. at Christmas. I remember yeah. that the first time, my own, and well, just I... being wowed by that video. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's overplayed now, but when you sit and listen to it, it's still a fantastic song. Uh, Even I will admit that it's just a brilliant song. I can remember my father saying, is that thing still at number one? Because it got there for nine weeks in 75 and then another five weeks in 1991. No, it is iconic. Absolutely iconic. I agree. Now, oh boy, this is tough because my number one and my number two really they could interchange i think it should be a first equal it really should and so i don't know right I've, I've got it written down here and i thought right okay i'm going to change it my number two then is bohemian rhapsody i had it at number one i'm now putting it at number two um, my number one is just as good every bit as good no difference but bohemian rhapsody absolutely brilliant and i just want to see the wee thing go mm -hmm. That's why I'm giving it number two now. <laughs> oh, yeah. You like that when we do that, don't we? Oh, yeah, I do, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's an absolutely iconic video as well. Uh, the fact that it's in three different, it's actually four different sections. Well, it's actually five, if you think about it. You've got that cappella start. Then you've got the piano ballad. Then you've got the uh, I See You Little Boy. Da, 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 da. Yes. And then... Then the rock bit, and then the the really sort of winding down bit, which I think is brilliant as well. Before the gong smashes at the end, absolutely brilliant song. And um, really, it is first equal. But for this list, I'm going to give it number two. Yeah, that's the bit where when uh, there's a, when Roy Thomas Baker was saying, Freddie said, "And this is where the opera comes in, dear." <laughs> <laughs> Going on here. <laughs> yeah, this is something. Okay, my number two. <laughs> Again, I have that. I don't want it number one. I don't want it number two. Because the both songs are worth it. So you've already mentioned it, and it is from 1979. And it's another brick in the wall part two. Yeah. Stand still, laddie. <laughs> yeah, I know. You, can't, you, don't, get you don't have any don't. meat. You can't eat your pudding. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely brilliant. Now, this has got memories, because at our school disco, Christmas disco that year, we um, we went and spoke to the DJ and, and they had, I said, have you got Pink Floyd and the Brick in the Wall? And he went, no. He says, it's a good job we brought a copy then. He yeah. says, you want me to play that? We went, yep. I know, at school too, we don't need no education. Yeah. <laughs> and we knew some of the teachers liked it because when it got on, they were up giving it a bop. So we sort of encircled them. We don't need no education. And they went, it was lovely because they took the spirit of it all. And when it had finished at the end, they clapped and we went, well, hey, it was, you couldn't do it. It wouldn't happen in school today, would it? No. But it's funny that none of the teachers actually turned around and said, excuse me, if that English is incorrect. It should be, we don't need any education. Yeah. A double negative, sir. A double negative. <laughs> yeah, great song. Great guitar solo from Mr. Gilmore. Well, I pr I think now we're going to have the wee zoom across because I think we've got the same number one. Without a shadow of a doubt, I think we've the same number one. And it's Mull of Kintyre by Wings in 1977 for nine weeks. The bagpipe still make hairs go up in my arms. I absolutely love it. I love the video. I love it when Linda is walking across the field to join Denny and Paul. You know, they're just strumming away. It's a grainy old video from the 70s. You know, if you think about it, it's only 1977. It should be a much better nick than it is, but absolutely fantastic song. Did absolutely nothing in the, the States. I think got the number of something like 60-something. 
but it's still the best selling non charity single uh, in the UK and the best selling charity single in the UK. It would be Elton John's, yeah, Elton John, but the best selling non charity is Maud Kintyre. So that's my number one. And again, that little it's taken a long journey because I haven't I didn't swap out us over on the thing, so it's gonna take a mile to get over to my side. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, um, and it's nice that it's both our number ones in the yep. recent of the person that wrote 90% of them lyrics was Denny Lane. Fantastic song. I just and then bagpipes, they just walking along that beach, it just fills you mm -hmm. with such joy. And being half yeah. Scottish, it does make me very proud to have my Scottish heritage when I see them walking down the beach. Mm -hmm. You were right, lots of the same on here. But um, I think Mullingan Tire is one of the greatest Christmas numbers. Oh, I, I it's one of the best sellings. It's my favourite McCartney single. And I was watching, um, uh, was it Talk More Talk? And they were talking about Band on the Run. I think it was Tom Hunyadi was saying that if McCartney died and the song that you know people would think about with regards to solo or wings, McCartney would be banned on the run in America. Over here, it's Mother Kintyre every time. Yeah, the B side of that was girls' school, wasn't it? Yeah. And and we rock old in America. That did very yeah. well. Yeah. I just don't think the Americans understood the sort of Scottish sound. And that's probably why it failed. Yeah, they didn't understand our heritage, did they? Right, well. well, I have three bubbling unders. And the first one is I Hear You Knocking by Dave Edmonds, which you've already mentioned. The next one is from 2002. And it's Girls Aloud, Sound of the Underground for four weeks. And I think it's a really, really good song. It very nearly got in the top 10. And then my, <laughs> my third choice you're going to hate. I put it in because I know you're going to hate it, but I do like it. But it annoyed me because it kept Saul Goldie's action off the top in 1972. That's little Jimmy Osmond, long haired lover from Liverpool. I like it's a great wee song, love it. And the backing of that is actually by the Mike Curb's congregation. Now, remember, we did a video when I showed uh, Softly Whispering I Love You by the congregation. And you put up a picture of Mike Curb's congregation. It wasn't that one I liked, it was the other one. But Mike Curb's congregation actually is on uh, Long Haired Lover from Liverpool. And I just think it's great. You know what it is? It reminds me of a kid because my brother had it and he used to play it a lot. And that's why I like it. Yeah, but I don't mind that song at all. It's not a thing um, at all. Yeah, that's some good ones. Okay. My first bubbling under is you've already mentioned it and it's something stupid. Yeah. Now, I love the song, but I always had a bit of a thing that father and daughter sing in it. Just gives me the little bit of the... I, mm -hmm. I know what you mean. Mm -hmm. So that's why um, Nicole and Robbie doing it is a lot more fun. Yeah. It's a great song. Yeah. But I think the video to it is super. Yeah, and she looks gorgeous. And yes, and I adorable. think they had a lot of fun doing that video. Okay, my second one is a cover song, and it was from 2003, so I'm creeping into 21st. I think, and it's Mad World, the Michael Andrews and Gary Jules song. Yeah. A great interpretation of a great song from Tears for Fears. Okay. It's a very, and it was very poignant sort of thing. You know, seeing the other side of Christmas when people, you know, are on their own. And I think it's a great version. It was three weeks at number one. And it's amazing that Tears for Fears only got to number three with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, my next one. We're going back, way back now, to 1956. Mm. Seven weeks. And this, uh, this is one of those songs that reminds me of my granddad. Because of the whistling in it. Now, my granddad was a great whistling, and it's um, Johnny Ray's just walking in the rain. All right, yeah, well, yeah. I, I think it's, I think it's, it's a very personal song. But my granddad used to whistle, and that's one of the tunes he used to whistle. And this year, Tommy, he, he died in December, on the December mm -hmm. the ninth. So that song always 
is a Christmassy one that my from my granddad. Uh, my next one is from 1959. Good lord! Yes, six weeks. It was a song that was in my mum's record collection on the Pi record, and it's the one that goes do up, be do, be do, be do up, be do, be do, be boom. What do you want to make my eyes for me for? Like Emily Ford in the chat, mates. I just mm. love that song. Mm -hmm. It's great coming from someone that listens to Motorhead. Mm. What do you think of Shaq and Stevens' version of it? I like it. That's all right. Just a thing. And the last one is it's a song that I brought, but I don't like it. But I brought it for one reason only. We're going to 2009. <laughs> it was only one week at the top. Killing in name, Race Against the Machine, set up by a DJ called Joe Morley to, to keep X Factor for their fifth consecutive number one at Christmas. And everyone went and brought it just to chop, stop Joe McKedry, the climb, getting to number one. It did eventually get to number one. But I've only mentioned it because it's power to the people that <laughs> had enough of X Factor songs being number one. Because they're absolutely well, drunk. The, the, wait, the part of the people, yes, but it's the people that are buying the X Factor songs. So they are. They're, they're not just uh, making it number one for the sake of making it number one. People were buying them. Yes. You didn't know, get played on top of the pop, so apparently. Oh, well, that's fair. There's lots of, there's lots of um, colourful metaphors in it, as Mr. Yeah. Spock would say. <laughs> Anyway, that was a super little one. Um, lots of repeats, but it's just a bit of fun. So uh, I just want to say thank you, Richard, for the we've done, we've done doing this a long time now, and they're still very popular. So I think I'm going to say to all the people from Richard's channel and my channel, thank you very much for watching these and making these so popular. Do you want to add anything to it, Richard? No, I just want to wish everybody a happy Christmas. So this is recorded on the 23rd, so... Have a good, peaceful Christmas. Enjoy your dinner and just take it easy. <laughs> yes. And will you be joining us for the bit in the middle? I will indeed, yes. Um, I'll have a little drop of the black stuff going at the same time. Excellent. So Sorry. you'll see Richard again on the 28th on the um, live stream that we're going to call a party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if we can. So it only leaves one thing to say, and it's goodbye for me. And it's goodbye from him and we'll be back in 2024 bye yeah. for now bye bye